Michigan all the time. Get rid of all that bad juju. I don't want his other foot to fall off. 
Remember, look us up on What's the Fluff. Love ya. Bye. Ow. Sarah had been trying to write a book for ages, but she was still mm -hmm. on page one. Until she discovered speakyourownbook.com. Sarah teamed up with one of our trained writing coaches who listened to Sarah's book idea, asked the right questions, and guided Sarah every step of the way. In 90 minutes, they had written the outline for Sarah's entire book. Within weeks, using the speak writing method, Sarah became a published author, both online and in print. Mm. Whether it's a textbook, an autobiography, a novel, or a children's book, speakyourownbook.com can help. Yeah! Visit our website today to download our free 50 question guide and schedule your free consultation. With Speak Writing, anyone can publish a book. Speak your own book today. You speak, we write. Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Florida. And today I would like to wish everyone a very happy solstice. Whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere like me and celebrating the Winter Solstice or Yule, or whether you're in the Southern Hemisphere and celebrating the Summer Solstice or Midsummer, I hope that you have a wonderful Sabbat with much joy. One of the things I've found most fascinating in my own spiritual growth in recent years is the deeper understanding of the relationship between the Northern and Southern Hemispheres and how the Sabbats reverse along with the seasons. And in studying this relationship, I find that it adds an extra dimension to the understanding of both Sabbats that are being celebrated in the two hemispheres. Today we celebrate the solstice. And in the Northern Hemisphere, it is the shortest day of the year. It is the point where the sun reaches its lowest point of strength. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's the summer solstice when the sun is at the height of its strength. But the same thing happens in both Sabbats. The sun reaches one extreme and must turn back in the opposite direction. And this, I think, is an important lesson about the nature of life and how our soul progresses. When we have gone to the furthest extent that we can with a certain lesson or set of lessons, we must change direction. We cannot simply stop. We must continue to grow and continue forward with our cycles. This is the nature of being. It's one of the things we learn from the Sabbats. And if you look at the entire wheel of the year, as it is celebrated in the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere, and compare them in the same way that you would a comparative astrological chart, you will see that each one sheds light on both Sabbats, not only the one that you are looking at. So, I hope you find that interesting. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday. And until next time, may you blessed be. Today's vlog is brought to you by the word, wait for it, Sabbat. Sabbat. A Sabbat is a major Wiccan festival. There are four grand Sabbats whose energy is primarily feminine. These are Samhain, Imbolc, Beltane, and Lunasta. There are four lesser Sabbats as well whose energy is primarily masculine. These are the Spring Equinox Astara, the summer solstice, the fall equinox, and the winter solstice, Yule. The lesser Sabbaths are key to the position of the sun and are reckoned by the solar calendar. In former times, the grand Sabbaths were reckoned by the lunar calendar, but they were long ago tied to the calends, or the first day, of the months in which they occur, and are now usually reckoned by the solar calendar as well. Hi everybody, we're back and we're going to talk to another great artist who's out there. Kathy McManaman is uh, is an artist and she's going to talk to us about her CDs and the music she produces. But first, welcome Kathy. Hi, thank you very much for having me here. And so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So people who might not know who you are. <laughs> okay. Which I probably um, very few people that don't know you. Oh, I, who knows? <laughs> um, and and if, if there are new folks out there, yay, welcome. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Um, I've I've been a musician all my life. I've I've done other things, but I have always played mm -hmm. music, written music. I started writing music very very young. I think I was six or seven years old, and I won't share any of that music because you know I didn't know anything about music theory at that point. 
But all, th all through school, all through my young adult years, uh, I played music in one way or another. I was actually a liturgical musician for the Catholic Church for 25 years, which is where I learned most of what I know about composing and arranging, working with volunteers who didn't read music. So I got a lot of good practical experience there, but I've been very much associated with the pagan community for about the last 20 years. And I have played music all over the country, in Canada, and largely where I play is science fiction conventions and music festivals, but I've, I've done things like Heartland and um, Dandelion Gatherings and a few witch camps. And my music's gone over pretty well there. So I've got, I've got a fan base that reaches through different communities. Um, probably the thing that most people know me for is the Rune Songs project that I did in 2017 and 2018 that got released in the years, a couple years after that, 2019 and 2020, which is a, a two volume music project based on all of the runes of the Elder Futhark. And I wrote one song for each of the runes. So there, it's a collection of 24 songs that took me two years to do. And I, I was able to collaborate with some other brilliant musicians on that. And it's, it's a body of work that is largely based on the rune stories themselves, mm -hmm. on my personal experiences with the runes. And then there are a couple songs that I wrote specifically for other people uh, with intention and magical purpose at the time. So that's probably how most people would know me is for the Rune Songs Project. But I have albums that are mm -hmm. community-based, that are, I, I have a couple instrumental albums and then I work with my bandmate Jason Nuremberg as the band Random Fractions. And we, we're the ones who, who play at the science fiction conventions. Sounds like a great name for science fiction, Random Factions, huh? Fractions. Yeah, Random Fractions. Well, we, we started off as a break off from another band and we occasionally have other people join us. So there, there's a growing list of people who are our randoms. <laughs> um, wow. Like, Betsy Tinney and Alexander James Adams and Eric Coleman and Leslie Hudson, who's from Canada and, and just an amazing group of people we've been very lucky to work with. Well, it sounds like a, <laughs> our very own pagan Wu-Tang gang out there. Uh, <laughs> so the Rune Project, that's what it is, right? I, I, I'll be honest with you. A lot of people that I'm, I'm learning about pagan music in a way that I didn't expect over the last year. Um, I, I found out it's so... So most people think of pagan music when I was talking to it, more of that filk style. You know, mm -hmm. I've heard filk or mechanic. That's what they think about, you know, the sort of that new age, that Celtic sound. Yeah. But I'm finding out there's all sorts of different music. Room Project sounds interesting. Where can they find your music? They want to, you know, sample it or they want to listen to it or more importantly, buy it and put it in people's <laughs> stockings. <laughs> and with the, the holiday season coming up, music makes a great gift. I'm just saying. Uh, but everyone can find me on Bandcamp. I'm at kathymcmanaman.bandcamp.com. And actually, if you search for Kathy with a C and just MC, I, I pop up pretty much right at the top of the list. True, and really um, talking about those two Rune CDs, this is volume one and volume two. Uh, they're similar, but not exactly the same with uh, really neat artwork done by my daughter, actually. And some of the you're talking about different music styles right. some of the songs on there are very folky sounding some mm -hmm. of them are more new age sounding very ethereal with lots of um, mm -hmm. instrumental effects on them uh, some of them are downright hardcore pagan chant type mm -hmm. and then some have a little more of a, a rock folk, folk rock sound to them so okay, let's talk about folk rock right there. Which one's that? Which album was that? Or what do you have that in? That's that would be the Rune Songs project. Okay. And then um, the album that I have with two two albums with my bandmate Jason, mm -hmm. um, an album called The Fire Inside, which was our first band album, and then the self titled Random Fractions CD. Uh, those are more folk rock. Terrific. So that's an interesting one um, uh, genre. Uh, those sort of things. So where do you think, uh, so where you have any plans for 2023 out there? Or is it just wherever it ends up being? Oh, I, 
I haven't made a whole lot of plans for 2023, just not knowing what the situation is going to be. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'll be attending some conventions next year. Uh, I know I'm going down to, I'm, I fingers crossed, going down to Gefilk in Atlanta, Georgia in January. Um, still trying to put plans in place for that. I would like to get back to Heartland in I, May I, next year. I, I had such a wonderful, I've been there twice. Mm -hmm. And it's such a lovely festival with amazing people. And I, I would love to get back there. Um, I would like to get out to Hexenfest in California in October. That's that's on my list. I've of heard of that one. That one's been interesting. Heartland. It's run, probably, uh, yeah, it's, it's like run by Sharon Knight and, in winter. And it's just, it's supposed to be fabulous. I so there are a number of cons in the Midwest I'll probably be attending next year too. Um, mm -hmm. In Iowa and Ohio. So... Just so you're out there, right you can find it. Um, I know you're on Bandcamp. Yes. Do you have any, and you are also on Facebook, you're on other spa sort of Instagram spaces or? Yep. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Kathy Mick Music, so that no one has to try to spell my last name. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to use that. I'm also using that on our Pagan World Creation site on there. <laughs> and then I have a website, kathymcmusic.com, which is where my schedule is constantly updated. So if people want to find me, know where I'm doing mm -hmm. concerts in person or online, because I do concerts either on Facebook Live sometimes or on Bandcamp, mm -hmm. uh, they can find my whole schedule there, kathymcmusic.com. Right. Now you talk about ethereal. Which one of your albums is more ethereal? You talked about folk music, but you talk about having ethereal music. Which one would they look for, for if they're looking for that more ethereal sound? Okay, some of the some of the songs in the Runes project are like that. They have a lot of deep background and mm -hmm. uh, just horns and strings and odd sound effects. Uh, mostly thanks to Alexander James Adams, who mm -hmm. was my recording engineer for that, and he added just some brilliant brilliant bits to that. I also have an instrumental album called mm -hmm. Mist and Mystery, which is based on two book trilogies and it's it's avalon and arthur based so mm -hmm. it's based on mary stewart's merlin trilogy the crystal cave the hollow hills and the last enchantment and then on marion zimmer bradley's prequel to the mist of avalon which are about the the building of the avalon community before the time of arthur uh, right in in that historical accounting and the music is based on the people and places in those stories. And I kind of merged them all together for a, a complete story. There are about 27 instrumental tracks, and it, it kind of plays like a movie, movie soundtrack. That would be wonderful. And who knows, maybe somebody, take an artist. I know we have our movie makers, and there's a movie in there. There you go. You might have a soundtrack <laughs> that you can license. Take, think about mm. it, folks. With hey, if anybody wants to talk to me about that, I'm here. There you go. Um, I know there are, are I know there are a lot of artists and creative folks who use it as background music for inspiration. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. That's pretty that is cool and everything else. So my last question for you is, uh, is that so Yule's coming, and yes. uh, so do you have any traditions or anything that you do that yeah you for your Yule? How do oh. you celebrate? Well. I'm, I'm living in a mixed household right now. So we've got both the, the pagan and the Christian traditions all running together. Mm -hmm. So it's, it tends, it's nice because it's a longer celebration and we, we stretch it out as, as far as possible. Um, something I like to do on solstice night that I have found to be just an incredible experience for me is I will come down to my basement, which can get pitch black with all the lights out. There's, there are no electronic lights. There's no outside windows. There's nothing like that. And around midnight, I will come down and turn all the lights off and I will sit in the dark for a period of time. And then I'll light one candle. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing to me how bright that one spark of light is, which is a reminder to me that no matter how dark things get at this time of year, with the, the changing of the seasons in the Northern Hemisphere, or even, you know, if we're going through metaphorical dark spots in our lives, there's always that one spark of light that can be so incredibly bright. And I think that's important for us to remember. Um, you know, the last few years have not been easy for most people. It, it, mm -hmm. We have been through some real challenges. And remembering that there are other people 
and community in our lives that are there to be bright lights for us is incredibly powerful for me. So that's that's one tradition that I, I make sure I observe every year, no matter what what else is going on. That's a wonderful thing. Now, for folks, mine is a visual uh, of, of that. Behind her, that's her walls. That's her space. So, yeah, so that is not a picture. That is a real honest to God painting on her wall. Mm -hmm. I found that out because, you know, you see so much of um, of this sort of thing like here. But that's real. I mean, it's really beautiful. It, was, it looks really well done. Thank you. Um, so there we go. Uh, Kathy McManon, Kathy McMusic. I like that one. <laughs> and uh, you can find her on Bandcamp. You can find her on Facebook. You can find her on Instagram. You can find her on the website. This Runes Project, which as you're very proud of, I've got to hear more of that. And so there we go. If you're looking for somebody who has runes, you want to add to their collection, I think that's a perfect addition to it. And so you get them something other than another set of runes or another bag. Get them <laughs> music for each one of those, a song for each one of those runes. I can't imagine anything that would probably turn so many people who love runes to, to, to joy. So give you the last word. Any last thoughts before we go? I just want to say thank you for for inviting me to do this. It's, it's really neat to be able to get to talk to some folks who perhaps don't know me. And I appreciate the opportunity. And I look forward to sharing my music with all of you. There we go. And so watch for her uh, out at festivals out there. And, uh, you know, get, get inviting her. You know, her, her, her calendar is going to fill up pretty soon. I have a feeling. All right. Yeah, folks and, and i love to i love to travel i will go anywhere <laughs> remember that we'll see you know we're all on the road here so yeah and, and so there we go so folks we can go and we're going to continue with our marathon out here and uh thank you for being with us thank you so much ed i thank you for all being watching our yule marathon and this is our first showcase and so um we're with Amy Wild of Castle Art. And uh, so it, is, it looks very interesting. I looked at her Facebook page and she has all this wild art around there, especially light art, which I love. Hi, Amy, how are you doing? Good, I'm doing really well. And uh, uh, so I know you're in your shop and uh, where is your yeah. shop located? It's in uh, Fish Creek, Wisconsin. We're at um, currently at 9341 Spring Road at the top of the hill shops. All right. And, wow. And then, of course, you are at castleart.com. I see that. Correct. Correct. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm actually like um, I do a lot of henna body art um, in the winter. Henna is kind of a hard sell. Um, so I do other things like you can see here. The Christmas tree has milkweed pods decorated with henna. Um, in the summer, we have like full time henna artists working out of the shop. Uh, doing henna body art but um for um the off season we just have supplies and stuff so we have our our henna kits and henna products over here too mm -hmm. um and some general you know inventory i found out really quick that having a shop you really had to maximize the retail space and um you know to you know uh make it worthwhile, you know, being here. I mean, you know, cause I used to just travel all the time and do shows and fairs and festivals, but now I'm kind of a little grounded here. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so, so what is that uh, for those people who oh, don't know? A lot it's of people... a, oh, I'm sorry. It's a plant um, that's used for body art. I use it in my hair. All this red is from the henna. Um, it makes a great Christmas present, the henna kits and stuff. And um, that's a big part of our summer business um, in the winter. Um, I do a lot of jewelry design and stuff. So like um, I have some of my jewelry designs. I have the snake ring and my dainty dot ring that's on the website. And I also have um, these, uh, whoops, where, the spiral rings that make good midi rings, you know, and, or accent rings that I designed. Um, mm -hmm. So I have those on the website as well. Um, yeah, so in the winter, it's more like product oriented. Um, and all these things make great Yule gifts, um, you know, and yeah, <laughs> sorry. I don't know what yeah, else to say. That's what we're telling people. That's what we're here for is that we are yeah. talking about you all. Um, yeah. and, and, and people don't think of metaphysical shops or art shops as, as, as a place where you go spend things. 
they think about that for personal development, but these sort of gifts make wonderful things. I know you yep. have a lot of light. I love light decor. I know you have a lot of light decor. Yes. So our biggest thing um, for this holiday season are our Turkish mosaic lamps. Um, and I, you can see I have them throughout the shop. Um, they're very easy to ship and they're very durable and they're great like for altars. I sell a lot of green ones for people's absinthe rooms. Um, you know, there's moon ones and all different shapes and sizes. I've been working on getting them on the website. I have basically um, these, I'm sorry, trying to figure, sorry, these okay. like flat ones. Yeah. So, you know, um, like this size and then the, um, mm -hmm. these swan neck ones, you know, they're kind of like a, or a gooseneck. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can kind of see there. Those are on right. the website. And then the table types are on the website. But I do have large ones, like these tiered ones and the hanging ones. Um, those you just have to call, um, you know, and, um, you know, because the shipping on there would be different, you know. Well, so, of course. And yeah. so there are people who see this at castleart.com. If you're looking for some lamps, these are kind of some cool stuff. And then you can yeah. contact us through the website. And if you want something more specialized, I, she's doing that. So, yep. so it's it's an interesting combination of of that sort of thing. So, can people buy like gift certificates for henna and you know henna art from you? Um, so that's one thing I haven't gotten to yet is gift certificates. Um, um I'm definitely willing to work with people for that. Um, but I don't have like a card or um anything specific uh, set up yet. But um, I can definitely do something for sure because it's just me. So I, you know, if someone turns in something with my signature, <laughs> of course I will know that. <laughs> so absolutely, I can understand that. And so you're in Wisconsin. You're doing your shop there, and uh, uh, you can see your, your address is on the site. So if you're in Wisconsin, you want to stop by. This is a great place to do. Um, so that's fun. And you, like you said, and then plus you have like the traditional stones. You do have jewelry. Yep. Um, you were talking about how the stones are so unique individually, so they're, they're hard they, for you to sell online. They I are. Um, like these ones here are Wisconsin moonstones. Um, a lot of people don't realize Wisconsin has moonstones. Um, so these are found in the Wausau area, and they make little great little, you know, to put in like these little cage necklaces and stuff. Um, I have some spectral rubiolite from Mama Vic. Um, many people know her from PSG. And I had some of the spectral ruby light or chimera stone put into small pieces um, mm -hmm. because otherwise they're like these big ones and stuff. Um, Jean Corn, I believe, too, has the spectral ruby light, but no one up here does. So it's definitely a unique stone for in the Wisconsin moonstone, too, is definitely unique. And two, for the campers, we have um, a great gift for campers are these mad mats. You can put them under your tent and it's like the water goes through them. I use them when I would go to PSG or Starwood. That's a good idea. Lay them out. You can see one up on the wall there. They're, you know, they're all like those types of patterns and stuff. So for the camper, that would be a great gift. So, yeah. So working on getting those on the website. I'm not sure. Um, uh, you know, the shipping to different areas, but I can definitely do that. Oh, of course. And, and this is why we want to support small business so they can continue to build. So let me go ahead and ask you, because I know you're, she's actually doing this during the time when a customer could walk in at any moment. And let's hope they that could. they do. Um, so how do you celebrate, Yul? Do you have anything special that you do or anything that's uh, more of your energy? Um, normally, I take time just to, um, I usually would go to um, Spirit Weavers out in Ohio. Um, uh, Ron Walks with Fire would have a celebration. Um, the last, during the pandemic, I didn't make it, but then I went this past year and reconnected with a lot of people out in Ohio, which was wonderful. Um, this year, because of the shop being open um, for the holidays, I will be here and just celebrating at home. So yeah dedication to the shop so the shop is relatively new then because uh it, yeah as you mentioned uh most people don't remember neil goodman and i were doing shops for merchants that had gotten stopped by covid so this is kind of your reaction to that right can it tell, is can you tell it us is. a little bit about that adventure because i remember us we were talking to you about how you were going to have to figure out a new way of going because covid stopped you as a festival worker it, it, it did. So um, what happened was um, 
uh, there was one venue or event that would allow me to work. Um, it was the Bailey's Harbor Farmers Market. And um, the organizers like mask up, hand sanitize, you can come and do henna and sell your jewelry. And I realized there was tons of people up here in Door County. And a friend of mine mentioned there was a shop that was open and um, I went and looked at it and, you know, it, there I went right into that shop. Um, it was a definitely a scary and transitional time for sure. So, um, but yeah, I just couldn't sit around and do nothing. You know, I, I, it's not my personality to sit home. So it was very difficult during, for me during the pandemic. I was petrified. <laughs> so, but now everything is better. I have a shop. Um, it makes me a little more stable, but I still get to go to, I'll be at like Pagayacon in Minneapolis. I'll be at Convocation in Detroit. So I still get to do some of my festival kinds of things mm -hmm. and still have the shop and stuff. And Convocation is happening this year too. Um, it's canceled the last two years. So I'm really looking forward to February to go to out to Con. Yeah, Convocation. I've, it's been a long time since I've been to Convocation and we might head out that way. That would be that would be great. Um, I didn't I did not actually know they were continuing on. So there you go. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then Pagaicon is really wonderful too. It's in Minneapolis. Uh, mm -hmm. Same you know kind of vibe and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um. So yeah, and I actually know people who are going to be speaking there. Uh, uh, Father D is going to be speaking there. A number of people are going. To, it's going to be like a big yep. kind of uh, energy of that to meet people, and they're going to be able to meet you. Um, yeah. so, so I know that you're at your shop and everything else. You have the circus class. You have all these items in your shop plus you're developing your website. So yes. are you excited about 2023? It sounds like you're getting excited for 2023 as well. I am. I am. It's going to be a very, um, I think, a transitional year. Um, you know, I at some point I have to decide whether to keep the shop or go back to what I, I was doing with traveling and doing shows. I really miss um, like, you know, Wisteria you know, PSG and Starwood, all those events that I used to do, I really would like to go to them. Um, it's so hard in this area because there's not a lot of people who want a job. And so it's, it, you know, it's, I, I had to work out and, you know, getting, you know, someone to watch the shop while I can go do um, the festivals again, because I really do miss them. So maybe, maybe it's an opportunity for someone. Yeah, uh, nice job. I'm hiring. <laughs> there you go. That's a rare thing in the world to hear that out there from our, our community. So spend money with them. Uh, and, and it is uh, castleart.com, Amy Wilde. And what is your Facebook page? It's also Castle Art, right? It is. It is. Um, I, I, I believe if you just put Castle Art, all lowercase, no spaces, it comes up. If you put a space in there, then something else comes up. But if you're unsure, if you go to the uh, website, there's like a link, Facebook link, and you can link right in, you know, but it should just be Castle Art, um, all one word together. And so as I do, remember, I want you to empty your wallets this year into our community because we could really use all the help across the community. And Amy and Castle Art looks like a, a perfectly wonder. And I know some of you guys have been looking for art for your uh, altars. And I think these searches lamps might be just the right thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're super pretty. They are pretty. And they and they have engaged and they look like they're engaging. Um, so like always, I, I give you the last word. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful that um, you're having me on here. Thank you. Well, and we'll come back to you. I mean, I want to talk more about Hannah and things like that, but, but right now, we're talking about Yule, and uh, so it's castleart.com. Amy Wild, and she's got jewelry. She's got a lot of things out there, and the beautiful shop. Visit her shop if you're in the area. I know there's a lot of people who do road trips. And uh, are you oh. south of? Uh, are you between Chicago and uh, uh, Circle Sanctuary? Um, so Circle Sanctuary is near Madison. So, mm -hmm. um, so I am about uh, Fish Creek is probably about three hours from Circle Sanctuary in Salina. North, south? North. Um, it would be, um, from Fish Creek, it would be south and a little west. So you guys who are traveling up to the Circle uh, Circle Sanctuary should stop by. I know everybody's always talking about shops and, and more and more of us are sort of doing the road trips to see the shops. And I think this would be a great one to visit. We've seen a lot of it and it's very pretty. And so there you go.
Well, thank you for being here and sharing this with us. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And we continue. So remember, castleart.com and Amy. And uh, let's see what happens next. And uh, if you see her at the festivals, get your henna done. Yeah, absolutely. Peace. Hi, everybody. We're continuing on our marathon. And today we're with Jimmy Clark with JC Music and Wellness. And if you've seen him, he's a musician out in the festivals. You've seen him perform. You've seen a lot of things. You've heard a number of things that he's doing, but we're going to get to know him a little better today. Hello, Jimmy. Welcome aboard. Hello. And uh, so, okay. So one of the things, let's go ahead. Um, I know you're a musician. You do a lot of things, but what are you, what, what do you do when you're not performing music at festivals? Well, when I am not performing music at festivals, I am teaching classes at festivals and I am providing workshops and I am giving lectures and I am working with clients even on the ground at some festivals who meet me there. So uh, my business is JC Music and Wellness. I've been in business for 25 years. I am 38. I started when I was 13 years old. I've actually very limitedly ever worked real uh, real conventional jobs out in the world. As far as retail, I sold pizza for a while and I delivered pizzas for a while, but mostly I have been providing music education services, stage craft, studio craft, production assistance, managerial consultation, pretty much everything and anything uh, related to the music industry, even helping clients get their legal documents in order, uh, writing business plans, and also teaching teaching guitar, bass, piano, drums, harmonica, the didgeridoo, vocals, song composition, music theory. And um, I provide a spiritual backbone for people looking to enhance their creative lives. So that's a, that sounds, wow, that's a lot of things. But down, it sounds like to me what you're doing is there is basically getting people to act in their higher power through music and through their various types of ways of dealing with that. I... I, um, <laughs> that's exactly what I do. And so, the, so that sort of thing. So that's all like a, a, first, a lot of work and a lot of things to do. I know you have some music out that's coming out, but you mostly this teaching aspect. Do you do it? Do you do it at festivals. You do it. Do you also do it personally outside the festivals? Oh yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I've owned, I, I haven't been teaching at festivals since I was 13 years old. No. Um, no, I, I have, I take clients privately in my own home studio, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, I do uh, at home of the client sessions. Mm -hmm. So I travel out. I did that for the longest part of my career where I was a delivery music educator. So I would drive to people's homes. Uh, I even got paid to drive out to other states before to do intensives, uh, intensives and retreats with people. But uh, my everyday uh my everyday thing is I, I have clients. I work with small children who are learning music for the first time. I work with the elderly. Um, I've had his, uh, a music client as old as 83 years old. His, mm -hmm. his, the man contacted me and said that his wife and her, she was like 83 or 84. He's like, she always wanted music and it was the one thing she never did. So I went and, I, and we did a month's worth of guitar lessons. It, it didn't stick, but she got to say she learned how to play an E minor chord. And strum it. I understand that. I understand that. I'm in the middle of one of my own projects, just because it's on my bucket list. Um, yeah. So there's. It's, so I can understand that. You know, there's never a, a point where you can't learn. We teach that mm -hmm. all the time. So do you do any online teachings, or you? you take oh yeah. Online? Yep. That is the uh, COVID. You know, COVID was an interesting beast because. Uh, <laughs> Just not to sound morose, but, you know, if it didn't kill you or ruin your life in some way or take away family members, if, if you were kind of like almost like a little bit around COVID, it was a very prosperous and abundant time. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually personally lost very, very, very few people during COVID and I wasn't very largely affected. Um I was able to keep working throughout it. And then because I'm a business owner, I was also able to get unemployment. So I had the funding and the, the resources to actually build my first online platform during COVID. So now ever since 2020, 2019, 2020, I actually also offer online client services all across the country. I have clients in California, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Um, I've got one in New York, I've got one um, in uh, 
we're in the Midwest, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So people, and usually for that, it's not always music instruction. Uh, it is sometimes. I got very good at teaching music through Google Docs. Um, I'm a Capricorn. So I'm, I'm all about the organization that having like, all right, well, let's make 75 documents that I can teach with. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have an online platform that COVID kind of provided me the time and the means to create. So for that, it's not always just music instruction. One of the other aspects of my business that I can do anywhere in the world, I don't even have to be on video for it, is artist life coaching. That's mm -hmm. actually what my most favorite uh, of the subsets of my business is, is I, I'm an artist coach. So for example, I have a, an artist I do, I'm working with actively now for the last three years. Uh, we do everything from writing her business plan, doing vision statements, arranging her studio sessions, hiring the musicians, getting them all paid, getting the contract signed, talking about her after the project, having her do a recap, yearly mm -hmm. recaps, anything that artists need not to become necessarily a better artist, but to become a war, uh, more well-managed and organized and intentional, mindful artist. And we could all use that. Even Absolutely. I, even I have a PA. I have a personal assistant. Um, I don't use her for everything, but she handles all the stuff that I I would rather be out working than doing, like creating social media memes for the holidays. Like that's not something I put my time in. I hire somebody for that kind of stuff. And uh, people have been talking to me that I should get some more of that myself. Um, I've been talking to a lot of the successful people about getting that idea of it. And we're going to be talking later in uh, these things to someone who can help you with that. But. So I, what I just heard, so I have a friend who's a musician per se, you know, somebody's at home, my, you know, a father, a mother, a grandmother, you know, a friend and says, well, I have a friend who needs that. So how would they contact you to say, maybe get them a Yule gift of, of, of maybe a starting session? Well, it's a good thing you asked because um, right now my social media is uh, I have uh, promotions. I have a local promotion where I'm in New Jersey. So um, people around are going to be seeing this from all over. But if you happen to be in New Jersey or know somebody in New Jersey, who would want to have experience, music or coaching um, on my JC music and wellness Facebook page, you will find an event where I'm offering a day of free lessons this Saturday. Um, I'm doing that in person, but I'm also offering online sessions for people who reach out. So if somebody wants to try an online session, I will also be soon setting up a day where I will sit at home for about five hours and fill the day up with people who want to do an online coaching session for free to try things out and check out the chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, um, so yeah, so the, uh, I'm also on Instagram. There's a JC Music and Wellness mm -hmm. Instagram. And um, that's where most people can find it. Um, I don't know if I should put my phone number on this video, but I do have it on you my. You can social if media. you want to, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, cool. Well, you never, know, you never know. So, but you can find it at those locations. Uh, yeah, and we're pretty open. I mean, this is the world we live in. Um, I mean, if my phone number's on social media, then it doesn't matter. So, if you want to call me to set up a consultation, please reach out at nine zero eight. 616-5716 mm -hmm. um, or JC Music and Wellness at gmail.com. Uh, but it's pretty easy to find me. I'm the only JC Music and Wellness on any of the platforms. Terrific. So you utilize all that. You give coaching, not just yeah, like you said, artist life coaching. I think that's uh that's a pretty rare thing. Um, so let me talk a little bit about it. I know. We're not going to talk a lot about it. Later we will, but I know you have a movie that you've been developing. Mm. And I've seen yes. of it. I think I think we need to spend a whole when you're ready, that's a whole nother subject. So that's gonna be soon too. Uh yeah. yes, well, that's one of the other things I do is um for mm. people interested, I'm also a music and film producer. I know it sounds like I wear five hundred different hats. There's just many branches on this tree hat, so they all go in different directions. Mm. Um, I am an active filmmaker and music producer. Uh, the music project I have for my own stuff is called Clark and Coble. Mm -hmm. um, Coble, um, I don't know if I told Ed this or I might have mentioned this, but um, unfortunately, my my partner, mm -hmm. Josh Coble, passed away in August suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, so Clark and Coble is now kind of Clark bringing you, presenting Clark and Coble. Mm -hmm. But um, we we created this epic movie called The Fool's Journey. 
F O O L S apostrophe because there was two of us. Um, so uh, the Fool's Journey is the, to my knowledge, it is the world's first music video anthology full length feature film based on the tarot. So imagine the wall meets the princess bride. It's it's structured as such. And with that project, it's a it's a like I said, it's a music video anthology. So it is in fact 22 independent music videos that also put together with the other bits, create a full-length feature film that runs two hours and 28 minutes. But it's also obviously the music and the art involved. So it's a multimedia project. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually just the other day created most of the website for Clark and Coble.com that will be live soon. And when it's live, we're actually going to be putting the first song right on there. If you add your email to our uh, email registration uh, field on the website. So yeah, Clark and Coble, we have um, currently 180, 180 masters that we will be ready to release as soon as we actually hit the button. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, I love seeing that. So let's go ahead and talk um, for a few more minutes, but I would like to know your idea because you're very much involved with media and pagan music and all that. I think it's going to become more and more strange. You're starting to see more and more mainstream activities. I made a prediction recently that by 2025, maybe 20, you know, within 2025, we'll start seeing stadium performances. You know, we're going to start seeing larger scales. I do. I just saw two very large scale pagan flavored bands and I was surprised how many people were there. I saw Two bands about a month apart, both in Brooklyn, New York. I saw um, High Lung. Which has broken the barriers. Uh, yeah, with their... With their bones. Like, I was like, oh, where's Starwood? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I saw them and I just saw Wardruna at the same theater, too. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing. It was a bunch of... It was a bu it was a bunch of witch, a bunch of witchy folk banging drums. Only they had a simulated fire, not a real fire, because you know, inside of a venue. But I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, this is what we do. And the place was called um, the King's Theater in Brooklyn, yeah. and it was probably, I would say, that it was probably about a thousand to two thousand people in there. So I think, yeah, it was, packed. Think, it was packed. I think that's growing, and especially you're starting to see our numbers. So what? So people who say that, oh, being a pagan musician just isn't really a life. I know there's a lot to do it, but people get pushed back on that a lot. Uh, I see it all the time that, you know, it's one thing to do it for fun, but it's another thing to think that there's a life for it. But you've made a life out of music and wellness and you've created a path for yourself. And now it sounds like through your artist coach, life coach training that you're helping others get into a path where they can actually make a living on that. Yeah, well, what, what's very cool too is, uh, again, I'm a man of many hats. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is my flagship that I actually teach at a lot of the major festivals, and I offer a weekly free Zoom group that's sponsored by a private organization called CSPNJ. I've been doing that for seven years. Mm -hmm. um, they have me listed under their spirituality pillar. Uh, they're called Collaborative Services Partnership of New Jersey, and they're an outreach organization. I work uh, through Trenton Psychiatric Hospital for them. I do community events and we're talking like this is like state level involvement. Right. Um, but what's amazing about it is that for the last seven years, they have let me do uh, moon magic and manifestation journaling. Mm -hmm. So because it's non-denominational um, or conservative, which we know which direction often conservatism leads. And, right. and when there, when there's an undertone of like, you know, you might find a Bible in every single residence room but you might not find the other books right so not neither here nor there but the point is is that on a state level they are letting me offer life coaching uh that teaches people in a non-denominational way how to right. use the lunar cycles the solar cycles the wheel of the year to manifest that which we want in our lives and you know i i use the agricultural uh metaphor for it you know so you know we're talking about like right now it's solstice for me, solstice is like right between now and December 16th. I'll give you a little moon magic taste here of what I do. So like what I'm going to be advising people to do to, today, I have a group today at three o'clock um, to four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Every single week I do the same day and time and 
what I'll be talking about today is how we are now in the small window before December 16th. December 16th is my cutoff date creatively and professionally for the work year because I consider solstice to be New Year's for me. That's the end of my year. It's the longest, darkest night. It's the darkness in its full aspect. It's pitch black out. I'm going to be actually in Massachusetts uh, on Goddess Mountain with Lady Tiana Marape of the uh, of the Temple of Sophia. Um, mm-hmm. We we are we are welcomed into her solstice ritual every year as like you know, as like kind of guests from far away, and um, I'll be up there in the darkness. You know, we we're doing our ritual. So December sixteenth is the cutoff date. I I figure sixteenth is a Friday. That means I have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to transition out of the active lifestyle zzz, buzz it's, it's like you start to unplug the wires one at a time and you start to feel yourself relaxing so i give myself that four day four, four or five day period year mm-hmm. by year until solstice at which point at solstice my my to-do lists they are done they are retired even if i didn't finish it they're getting crossed off the list and they're getting moved into a new list any of my projects that are in process, I finish whatever phase I'm in between now and then, and I do not begin another phase. So for me, this next month, and what I teach to my people is that this next three and a half weeks is a time of con- uh, conclusion and restraint. Restraint, hmm. not allowing yourself to say, you know, I had a client call me and say, hey, I heard you might be doing some recording projects. I'm like, Psh. talk to me after in bulk, dude. I'm not doing anything between solstice and in bulk, in bulk except resting recharging pooling magnetism pooling ideas saving money and staying pretty quiet for about 45 days and this is a yearly thing this is how i work my year and how i teach people to work my year Mm -hmm. uh my my year program so that's you know kind of the idea is um rolling it back i'm allowed to do this on a state level and it's pretty cool because it's bringing a pagan thing just enough under you know calling it pagan but it's still what we do as pagans. It's, it's life management, though. It's a basic life management skill, just utilizing you know some I- different iconography, because it is sounds like you do life management work, and so it sounds like you'd be amazing. That you're an amazing coach and everything else. Uh, I love doing it. <laughs> so, JC Wellness, and and you say and is it the Asper sign or is it the 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 Asper sign? Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, because or Google and. for. Because, for example, an email address won't let you have an ampersand, and my email address are things like Instagram is JC Music A N D and Wellness mm-hmm. at what. Um, but like on my website, it's an ampersand. Um, okay. um, my, I, my want, business... I want to ask that because that, that can get you know that can get a little tricky at times. But so there you go. But you can look it up, Google. Look it yeah. up. Well, the, the amazing thing is, is that um. I consider myself a boutique coach, meaning I don't take on, I don't take on 50, 60 clients. If I did, I wouldn't have time to do the other things that I do, like produce video and music for myself and for clients. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I do, I produce music and videos for clients as well. Um, I wouldn't have time uh, to nurture my personal relationships. And this is all part of the moon magic course too, is the 11 life buckets. Mm-hmm. I live those 11 buckets in order to keep things going. So it's one of those things where, um, as far as getting uh, tricky, getting back to your original point, uh, yes, but I don't get most of my business from online because I'm a boutique coaching company. So I usually have about 20 to 25 clients at a time that get very involved interaction from me um, at a very, very, very fair rate, actually, because mm-hmm. um, I want to be accessible to people. Um, but, you know, I also do that with everything else. So. The point is, is uh, the trickiness of SEO and, so, and stuff like that. Most of my business is referral based, so I haven't run into many problems with the and versus the ampersand. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm learning. You deal with the, the online for people in the online world. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this. It gives us a real insight into what you do and what people can uh, look at that and um, you know that sort of thing. And, uh, and and so yeah. So as you head into the end of the year, you're going to finish up your projects and then. When you come out of Inbalk, I guess I want to, I want to catch up with you after that. Uh, well, I mean, I'll I'll still be active during that time, but I just don't get into like heavy duty projects. Like I've got so many little things that uh, there's so many little things that need to be oh, addressed sure. at any given time. Um, I just practice restraint. Start like I could go in the studio tomorrow and I could start recording 15 new songs because that's just how I operate. I'm a professional songwriter, so you know 
Uh, you put me in the yard with a bunch of bricks and tell you to build a wall, you're going to get your wall. So that's me when it comes to music. So I actually have to like say, no, I I'm you. not going in the studio because I, because you know what happens? You get into a new project and it's not just like, oh, I'm going to go in the studio and do a thing. No, now you're hiring 15 people. You got to pay them. You have to do contracts. You got to arrange the schedule. You have to make sure the mixing, the mastering is done. And before you know, it, you've got like a whole month's worth of work and you've got three weeks to finish it my oh, advice yeah. to everybody out there is a little free life coaching advice between now and december 16th wrap it up whatever it is get it done and then take a break that's the one thing everybody doesn't do people don't eat enough they don't sleep enough they don't drink enough water and they don't chill out and enjoy slow recreational time society doesn't really encourage us to do this no i think that's a real truth and um, i think that's a great place so here you are, JC Music and Wellness, and you can find out all of these things. If nothing else, just watch the Facebook page. There's a lot of fascinating things there, and, and just follow. Because I think you're going to see a lot of great things in 2023. I, I, I'm looking forward to all of it. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. You'll be seeing more of me, because you and I got conversations to be having about other projects on the side. So keep an eye out. You might see this face and this hat more often. Oh, uh, I certainly hope so. It would, it would be a pleasure. And Excellent. with that... And then with that, we'll continue on with our Yule stories and uh, let's enjoy.